Welcome back to my video tutorial on various GIS concepts. Um, today we are going to talk about Google Earth, how Google Earth can be used to make various kind of terrain analysis. As you know, Google Earth contains a lot of information actually uh, on the map about topography, about land use, roads, elevations. So we are going to extract the elevation data from Google Earth uh, and then uh, use them to prepare various kind of GIS maps. To do that, we'll have to use a couple of tools in between Google Earth and ArcMap. Those are GPS visualizer and TCX converter. So if we want to make a kind of flow chart as to how things are going to go, it's going to go like from Google Earth, we'll be uh, collecting some XY data and save them as KML files because that's what Google Earth understands. And then we'll be using GPS visualizer. This is a website where the KML file can be uploaded and saved as GPX uh, format. And eventually we'll be using TCX converter, which is a, a little software that you can download on your computer to upload GPX file and then convert them into CSV files that Excel can read and use uh, to clean up the unnecessary data. Eventually, we'll be transitioning from this process data into ArcMap to prepare various shape files and then other uh, other uh, terrain analysis maps such as TIN, raster, contour, topographic profiles, 3D visualization. We can even do volume calculation uh, if we know the contour lines and the DEM. Also cut and fill to see the areas of erosion and deposition on earth surface. So these are the topics very relevant to geology uh, and uh, environmental science, geography so on and so forth. So we are calling this uh, first three steps as preparation phase and then arc map as kind of outcome. So as you know, this is uh, just an example of a, a map from all of Silent Virginia. It is taken in 2018. Same map uh, was used to collect these uh, uh, GPS uh, tracks to collect the uh, XYZ coordinates. I'll show you in a second. So before we started, actually I did a several preparation. For example, I'll show you that I already uploaded Google Earth here. This is our beautiful campus, Lock Haven. I want you to kind of pay attention to this area and this area here. So this is a 2016 map. If we slide back, 1994, the area looked very different. You can see those uh, sedimentation of the islands are not there. And if we slide back to various time scale, we can see the changes that area has gone through. Also this area, for example, the uh, alumni center didn't exist back in time, now it does. So in addition to Google Earth, I have also um, opened up to show you that uh, GPS visualizer website that I mentioned, that's where we'll be uploading data and that's where we'll be adding elevation to the data that we collect from Google Earth. Also, I have this uh, TCX converter that I mentioned a second ago. That's something you can download onto your computer. So let's, uh, and also I have uh, our uh, map opened up and I have also added uh, some tools uh, before beforehand and activated the extension like 3D extension and special analyst extension that we'll be needing. With this, let's get 
to our uh, Google Earth and we'll show you how easy it is to collect the XYZ coordinate of our Google Earth. So all you have to do is write the name of the area that you are interested in. Click search. So for example, the Lock Haven map is here. To collect additional information such as the XYZ, meaning that uh, longitude, latitude, and elevation data you can see shows up here, we uh, will be collecting those uh, along a track. So first thing you need to do is add a path and you can give a name if you want and you can put it aside here. And when you start clicking, every point you click, it will collect longitude, latitude, and elevation data like this, like this. You can continue, continue to click or you can hold down the control key and then uh, uh, the left mouse button that is not control key and keep just dragging and it will continuously collect data like this for each of these dots that you see they will collect x y and z data so you can do this so this is just to show you how to collect data once you have done that you need to bring back the folder that you opened from google earth and say okay and uh, save that file save as save places as give it a name whenever it comes It is a bit slow today. Uh, here we go. So here I'm just saving this as, let's say, Lock Haven. And make sure that you save the data as KML. Default is KMZ. So you, you save it where you want. So I saved it here. And work here on Google Earth is really done. So next phase is if you remember next phase is uploading the, this data uh, to uh, uh, to uh, gps visualizer so that we can convert the kml data into gpx so let's do that so here is where you need to choose the file you want to upload and then convert and add the elevation data to the KML data you just collected from Google Earth. So you navigate back to where uh, your file is sitting. Uh, here we go. So that file I called, if you remember, I just called it a uh, lock haven. So here is my KML file. I'm clicking open. So the lock haven file is added and I need to hit the button convert and add elevation to this XY data. So once I do that, uh, elevations for each of the XY locations is added. Now you need to either download this or you can right click on this and save this link as uh, gpx format as you can see so i gave the same name again and save at the same location except this time it is a different format gpx format from kml so once i have done that that is done uh, let's move on to our our next friend which is tcx converter right here 
So you open that file, you find uh, Blockhaven GPX. So you open that file, and you can see you have the latitude, longitude, and altitude, meaning these are <coughs> in meters. And now from here, we need to convert that into CSV file. Again, it's a CSV, same, keep the same name. I'm just changing the format from KML to GPX to CSV file so that I can read this file in uh, Excel and load it up to ArcMap. And ArcMap reads uh, CSV files. So I'm saving it. And you should say no so that this uh, each the data you are saving, they will be saved in as a separate column. So it is actually done here. And let's go back to our ArcMap. So what you can do is you are going to collect or add rather uh, the add data as XY data. So you navigate to the folder. So you find your Lockhaven CSV right here where you saved it. You add and make sure that X field is longitude, Y field is latitude, and Z field here is altitude. And you see that here is unknown coordinate. We have done that before. So what you need to do, you need to assign a geographic coordinate to it because these are longitude, latitude data. So I need to click on edit and go to geographic coordinate system. Since I got the data from Google Earth, Google Earth uses WGS84 geographic coordinate system. So I'm going to geographic coordinate system world and add WGS1984 to those data. And I say OK. And I say OK again because to create the object ID for each of the location. And voila, so all these points, all these points are added that uh, I uh, digitized literally from uh, Google Earth. And that, however, this is, as you know, this is just an event theme. So next thing to do is right click on it and convert this data by exporting it to a shapefile. So I can export the data to a shapefile and give the same name maybe. I'll say lock haven. This time I'm not giving any space between lock and haven because ArcMap, as most of you probably know, does not like spaces and stuff in the naming convention. So I say, okay. And it's saying, do you want to add the data as a shapefile layer? I say, yes. So now the data are added. You don't see any changes because each of these points are converted to a shapefile point. So I can remove my uh, original data, meaning event theme, and you can open its attribute table of this shapefile point data and see how many points actually we digitized. Down at the bottom, it shows 402 points we have longitude, latitude, and altitude for. These are the three that we need. We don't need anything else. So, you know, you could uh, delete those fields if you wanted. Uh, if you, you can see, you can highlight a field and you can delete it and you can see, yes, I'm just showing an example, but you could do all the unnecessary files except for latitude, longitude, and altitude, you could delete. So uh, I will stop right here and I think I will create uh, the next video tutorial as to how we can go from this point data to create various other RGS maps such as the 
such as so I'm here I added that so I and created a point shape file we can convert this point data to a 10 is triangulated integrated network is a vector data very good for creating 3d images and raster data from them so you can create raster data and create contour from this data that I just added to my arc map I can then once I have the raster uh, or 10 I can create topographic profile I can use the arc scene to do the 3d visualization of my data and calculate various kind of like volume above a certain datum uh, or a cut and fill if we uh, can compare two maps from two different generation one from let's say 1930s and one from uh, 2018 for the same area whether there are any elevation differences in other words whether certain areas has undergone erosion or deposition all right so let's stop here and we will pick it up